Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're doing a little indie palette roundup. I have three palettes from three different indie brands that I really wanted to talk about on my channel but I just didn't have the space in my filming and uploading schedule to give them each dedicated individual reviews so I wanted to do sort of like a version of my catching up with Colourpop videos and that is what indie palette roundup is. These are three super cool interesting palettes from three super cool interesting brands. I've had great experiences so far with all three of these brands. We have the Fantasy Cosmetica Rogue palette. This actually came out a while ago and while I have shared swatches and photos and stuff over on Instagram, it just kept getting put off as far as doing a dedicated YouTube review. But I really love Fantasy Cosmetica. I love Jordan, who runs the brand. I really like their formulas. I just like their palettes all around. I mean, obviously their Druid palette was my number one palette of 2022, which is a really big deal considering that they are a new brand. So we're going to talk about this Rogue palette. This is their most recent release, but it has been out for a couple of months now. Then we have a very new release. This is from Cleona. This is the Deep Sea Treasures palette. This is an all shimmer palette. has such cool artwork on the front. So I want to give you a close-up look at this little baby. Personally, I do need both mattes and shimmers in my looks, so this will be a companion palette but I wanted to give it a chance to shine on my channel as well. So the second palette we'll look at is Deep Sea Treasures from Cleona. And last but not least, we have this Don't Be Jelly palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. This is the one I'm wearing on my eyes today, so I will do a tutorial with this palette along with swatches, close-ups, all that stuff. I'm going to give you a quick little overview, some important information, some swatches, and I'll also show you a tutorial using the Don't Be Jelly palette, and I'm just going to kind of wrap up all my thoughts along the way. So let's start by digging into the Fantasy Cosmetica Rogue palette. Here is the Fantasy Cosmetica Rogue palette outer packaging. This palette is currently available and it's in stock at the time that I am filming this video. It's priced at $38.99. US. This is a little square cardboard nine pan palette, same size and shape as their previous nine pan palettes. There is a mirror inside here. This palette is interesting because it's the first from the brand to have all of the shadows sold as singles as well. So these are magnetic shades. And if you're just interested in some of these, then you don't have to pick up the whole palette. I will be very interested to see if this is something that they do with the previous palettes going forward. Each one of these little columns is sort of laid out in a monochromatic type look, but of course you don't have to use it that way. Of these nine shades, we have five true mattes and then four very shimmery metallic shades and all of the metallic shades in this palette have some sort of a duochrome type of shift. Now when you see my swatches here, there are finger swatches on top, brush swatches below. These are done with a dry brush. There's no primer, no dampened brush, nothing like that. These are incredibly consistent, especially these lighter shades I'm really impressed by because those do tend to be a little wishy-washy no matter what brand they come from. So I do think that they did a really good job curating these beautiful little cool tone shades in a variety of depths and finishes all around. I really like it. Now let's take a peek at this Deep Sea Treasures palette from Cleona Cosmetics. The Deep Sea Treasures palette definitely gets the award for most creative custom packaging. This little treasure chest look is just the outer carton that the palette comes in. I think this is so clever and so cute. I know it's a small detail, but it's definitely indicative of the 
level of thought they put into every aspect of their releases. And the front cover of the actual palette is very different, but still super beautiful. You can tell this is a fully custom artwork. This is so cute. I love this. I do want to mention that the price of Cleona products does seem to fluctuate a little bit for me. I guess it's because this is a Canadian brand, so the USD price does tend to fluctuate a little bit, but this palette is generally right under that 95 US dollar mark. That is incredibly expensive. There's no two ways about it. But if you know about these types of shadows, these are hand-pressed multi-chrome shadows, and individually shades like this on the Cleona site are going up for maybe $10, $14, $18 a piece. It just depends on the finish, what ingredients go into making these shadows. So I want you to really get a lot of swatches, a lot of information about this palette in particular because it is quite the investment and it's going to be up to you whether that's something that's worthwhile for you or not. I know that some of my friends, fellow content creators have coupon codes or affiliate codes, so I will link those too. Maybe that way I can help you save a couple of extra bucks. Whether or not I have an affiliate code for a brand, I always try to provide those. Everybody truly wins in those situations. If you can save a couple dollars, if one of your favorite content creators can get a little affiliate payment, it's all around a good thing. So I'm showing you, again, finger and brush swatches here. These are incredibly saturated. I think the brush swatches on this one actually even look better than the finger swatches, which kind of blows my mind considering that these are all shimmer shades and typically shimmers, for me anyway, perform the best with finger swatches, but these look pretty darn good. I also wanted to show you what these look like with the flash so that you could really capture those sparkles. You know I like to be extra when it comes to the swatches and these are truly so dynamic, so beautiful, and honestly, even if you're not interested in buying this palette, just look at how beautiful these are. Isn't this just fun to look at? I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm easily entertained by shiny things. Last palette for this video is the Don't Be Jelly palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. This Don't Be Jelly palette from Unearthly Cosmetics also has some really fun packaging. This palette is priced at 60 US dollars and there's quite a bit of information on the back of the box here. So once we're done admiring this shifty iridescent detailing. Take a look at the back. There are a couple of shades here that are labeled as pressed pigments. They have to put pressed pigment for cheeks because they do carry an eye safety warning. So just take note of these. If you've had allergic reactions or staining or anything like that in the past, these are the type of shadows that I would recommend doing patch testing with. For me, it's not a deal breaker because I haven't had those issues, but I do just like to make you aware of it just in case, you know, safety is important. And shout out to Unearthly for putting the same information on the back of the palette itself. I think that is so important. It's something that I really appreciate. I applaud them for. Now let's look inside this stunning palette. We have 12 shades. There is a mirror in here that really striking jellyfish print artwork in the background I think works so well with this palette. Sometimes that type of thing can distract from the shades and distract from the overall palette, but I think it really works here. We have an almost even split. You know, if you know me, I like a even split of mattes and shimmers. Here we have five mattes and seven shimmers, so pretty darn close. Definitely enough for me to get a lot of different eye looks. And these do seem to be laid out in little duos. The top row and the bottom row shadows do kind of coordinate, but obviously you can mix and match these to your heart's content. Of course, I'm going to give you the finger and brush swatches for this palette. These are pretty consistent. The main exception being that very, very pale pastel green, 
but that is what I expect from super light pastel type of shades like that. They do need to be built up a little bit more and I don't think that necessarily means that it's not high performing. These are the type of shadows that look good in a swatch. They look good, but they look even better on the eye. The performance is really top notch. You'll get to see that later on in the tutorial portion. But first I wanted you to see these shifty shadows in that flash lighting as well. I probably should have just done that for the Rogue palette. I didn't think about it at the time because I filmed these swatches in the order that you're seeing them. And I am editing this video when I don't have access to my studio, so I can't go back and refilm them to show you with the flash. Sorry about that, but you know what? I'm traveling and I'm still getting some videos out for you, so hopefully that makes up for it. Now let's take a look at how I created the eye look I'm wearing in the talking portions of this video. I love mixing shadows to create the perfect shade that I want. And these two mattes, Coral and Sea Star, worked so beautifully together to create a sort of warm, pinky type of transition shade that I was looking for. Mixing together multiple shadows is a great way to get even more looks out of your palettes as well. So, you know, if you don't like it, you can just wipe it off, but I definitely encourage you to experiment with mixing together your shades and mixing two mattes that are similar in tone is a great place to start if you're not sure how to dip your toe into that process. Now I'm using this deep, deep, it's like a brownish blackened purple shade called Sea Urchin to really get some smokiness and depth on the outer part of that lid. And then taking Luminescence, gorgeous shifty shadow. This is nice and warm, which is why I knew I wanted to warm up that crease shadow a little bit. Put that on my lid with my fingertip and then blending out from Luminescence to Sea Urchin with the shade Jellyfish so I could get a pop of purple. Now I'm just doing a little bit more blending, softening up those edges and making sure everything looks all put together and mixed together nicely. Curled my lashes, added a little bit of mascara, and that finishes the look for today. This is definitely the type of look that I could see adding a little pop of waterline liner or even some actual liner and half lashes. This is such a beautiful wearable but still fun and interesting look and these shadows were a dream to work with they just blended and mixed together so nicely it only took me a few minutes to create this eye look and i feel like it looks fantastic it looks dynamic it feels like me i'm definitely going to be wearing this look again these are three great releases three great indie brands as far as quality innovation being interesting these three palettes all have it. I do think that Rogue is probably the one I see myself using the most. Now, honestly, that may just be because I've had it for the longest, so I actually have used it the most. But if you put green and purple together in a palette, I can't really resist it. <laughs> because those are my two favorite eyeshadow colors. If I had to choose a favorite, I would probably choose this one. Although I have to say, I really love the eye look I created today with this Don't Be Jelly palette. But for me, a couple of the colors are not ones that I'm going to use a lot. So this pastel green, just not really flattering on me. And I would say that I'm not gonna use this blue either, but I have really kind of been loving blue lately. So maybe that's not even necessarily the case. At the end of the day, these are both really, really beautiful palettes. Deep Sea Treasures is not one that I'm gonna use on its own. This will be a companion palette. This could be a great little travel palette for me, although it's kind of expensive, so be careful if you travel with these shadows. This is almost a $95 palette. Like, there's no getting around the fact that this is expensive. No matter what you're getting, whether it's worth it to you or not is gonna be more of a personal thing because not everybody has $95 in their eyeshadow palette budget. So, you know, 
I get it. I understand that these are expensive shadows to make. And if we go and take a spin on the Cleona site right now, some of their single shadows, Kiln is almost 19 bucks, Solder's almost 19 bucks, Mosaic is 13.60. Empress is 1435. So, you know, I understand where the price point comes from, but I do think that can be a little shocking, a little staggering if this isn't the type of product that you're typically shopping around for and pricing and, you know, forking over the big bucks for these handmade, super special single shadows. I can see both sides on that. There's definitely something for everybody here, even if everything isn't for somebody. I would love to hear which palette is your favorite. Have you tried any of these? Do you want to see any more tutorials featuring these other palettes? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Anyway, I don't know. Oh, oh my gosh, please don't drop these. They're so expensive, I will literally cry. Oh, oh no. Nope, that's not even funny. Get it together, Amanda. Get it together, Amanda. Shimmer queen, she's a shimmer queen. Do you also make up songs by yourself in your room? Cause I do. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, <clears throat> all right, I'm fine, I'm good. Doing, doing good, doing great, doing great. Don't worry, don't worry, I'm fine. Unique New York. Okay, let me, let me pay attention to what I'm doing here. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Did I do it? Got it. This is such a classic, classic Amanda look. Happy about it. Sometimes I wonder if I make sense when I film. <laughs> Not always a guarantee. Shifty, purpley. It's my favorite. It's got my heart. Actually, all of these palettes have a shifty purple in them. And I truly love that for me. This came out only shortly before their collaboration with Heather Austin. Make sure you go check out that video as well. I did a whole review on the Resurgence collection that my friend Heather made with Unearthly. Um, yeah. What? I got distracted. What, do I, what am I talking about? I'm super excited to go make myself dinner because I have a black bean burger and a fresh avocado. I got a little brioche bun. I'm going to toast it. I'm excited. A little pepper jack cheese, a little spicy mayo. I know the black bean burger is spicy and spicy mayo and pepper jack cheese. I'm a spicy girl. I don't know if you knew that about me. This makeup look is so cute. I wish I had time to film another video because I love this eyeshadow. I'll just have to wear this look again. Okay, fine. Don't twist my arm. <laughs> Where was I? Shh. It's not that deep. Now I'm super hungry ever since I told you about my black bean burger that I'm making. So I gotta go make some dinner. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I hope that maybe you discovered a new brand or a new palette that you want to check out. If you're getting into indies, this maybe this indie palette roundup thing will continue to be a series. I don't know yet. I didn't really plan that far. This is sort of out of necessity, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And you know what else? I love your face. And I will see you real soon. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.